ethics is quite interesting to me. Um, and you see, you do see differences in, you say, North American market versus EMEA. And, you know, companies, I think, historically, at least in the U.S., haven't really taken it seriously. They're like, hey, we're pro ethics. Great. But, you know, actually having a, a framework and understanding that and implementing it, it's actually quite challenging uh, to do for a lot of organizations. And so I think, you know, I think companies need to, you know, just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do something. You know, a lot of times, you know, if you talk about fairness and things like this, like who makes those decisions? Do you leave it up to the data scientists? Probably not. There's like 20 different mathematical definitions of fairness. This is a business question and the business needs to have a cross-functional team that is put together to put a framework together and discuss these things. And, and then you need, you need tooling and technology to help implement, you know, the governance framework. But I think it really starts with, with the business taking it seriously. And, and at least in, in North America and, you know, markets there, I don't think we're quite there. Europe is a, a, a lot further ahead than, than, than the U S yeah, they are. I just hope it meets the charter of our, of our organizations to do something, uh, ethically with, uh, with, with artificial intelligence. Sanjay, what are you seeing in this area? Yeah, so the uh, I would say you know there are two pieces which we are seeing like of course like uh, the the need and the discussions around it like strong plus one to that right, but to see it in practice I think there's more work to be done. In fact, uh, either technologists also think in two uh, in another way is that you know many of these things we have talked about as the uh, industry leaders and in, uh, in in that space, but is there a way ironically can we use ai even to identify the areas where there are gaps like because you know there are very different kinds of things like suppose i want to understand you know what's the stopping distance for my car there's a very different consideration than facial recognition right in in terms of the problem you're trying to handle so in my uh, like my gut feeling there is that it's a vertical like some areas where you have to be very much more conscious than others where we can benefit a lot from uh, larger learning but where the uh, the consciousness needs to be there. Perhaps you know you need some AI also to figure out and watch out for you know what really is going on, and that to me is a is a is a, is a gap which we should perhaps think about as a community. Sue, so I'm going to give you the last word here on uh, ethics before we turn it back to Jonathan. Okay, great. Well, thank you. Um, I think uh, in addition to what everybody else said here, I think you know one of the things is. We have to be very cautious, cautious and when we are talking about AI ethics governance framework, right? So one is standardization. Let's assume that we follow EMEA and we have something in North America. But then you also have to look at it not only from an enterprise wide, but if you're looking at, I go always go back to the verticals because there's certain verticals that demand a little bit more than others. And I'm going to repeat which ones those are. And now the, the whole thing about AI ethics then has different layers of it, especially when you talk about customer experience. So you're talking about different gender or age groups and you're talking about healthcare. So the complexity and the layer, it's not just we have a standard. There are layers and substandards and then you have privacy security issues. That, so you have to bring this all together, both from a business sense and IT sense. And then really going back to what David said a, a, a it's a cultural change, not but not just a data culture change. It is a cultural shift in the way we think about how we need to conduct business to not making ethics as part of the core business. And we are far, far, far from it, right? We are in a very nascent stage. But if we are, if we plan for it, if we strategize it, if we adopt it, and we just use it in one use case and just look at it like pilot test it and see whether it works. We'll be far ahead. And I love the fact that use AI to identify AI ethical gaps. I love what Sanjay said. So thank you for that. That's a good answer, Sue. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Sue. And thank you, everybody. Uh, before I turn back to Jonathan, just I want to wrap up what I think I heard here today. It was a lot. Uh, it was like a fire hose, really, of information. And um, I hope there was some nuggets in here. I'm sure there were some nuggets in here for everybody, if not a lot of them. Uh, I heard a lot of transitioning of the questions back to the bottom line for the business. I heard a lot about, we're just starting out with AI and we don't know where it's all going to go, uh, but we have to take it step by step. And we there are definitely things that uh, the, the business needs from the products that are you know represented here and otherwise. It's more complex than ever. Uh, the data management professional is squarely in the hot seat now 
of artificial intelligence. As a matter of fact, I view artificial intelligence on the maturity spectrum of data because data is that important to artificial intelligence. <laughs>